Okay, I get one more question. That's that, yeah. What you just said, um, global political economy. Can it be fair? Why or why not? You like tough questions, don't you? It's kicking my butt. <laughs> it's like it's invisible, man. <laughs> Well, that is, of course, one, it's a super tough question because, of course, it has never been. <coughs> I mean, it's always been core periphery kind of relationships. At least as far back as the 15th century, you can, you can see that there is a, you know, and certainly by the 17th century, Amsterdam is already the center of a global network, financial and mercantile, at the same time that that France and Sweden are fighting the Habsburg Empire in the Thirty Years' War, killing each other and bringing the birth of nation states, Amsterdam is already selling arms to both sides. So globalization and its weirdness, where like they don't even take sides politically, and their arms of octopus are extended to Java, to Indonesia, to all the other places, to New Amsterdam, what eventually became New York, that was already in existence in the 17th century when the Thirty Years' War was happening. Remember, at the end of the Thirty Years' War, from 1618 to 1648, the Treaty of Westphalia is the first treaty of international law, the first treaty where the word sovereignty comes, comes into legal usage. It's the first time states define their borders in a legal way. And so the, the, the world of nations whether nation states, empires, or kingdoms, and the world of global finance and commerce are were, began at the same time. It's not as it was a new phenomenon today. And so in the three or four centuries that they have been around, there hasn't certainly been plenty of plenty of robbing of raw materials from third world countries, bringing them back to, to you know, Mexico, where I come from, was the target of so much pillage and so much a, 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 a robbery, all our silver eventually flew into Spain. Thank God, at least the Italians from Genoa stole most of it <laughs> because they, of course, did not even know what to do with that. Uh, and so, you know, I'm not going to be able to give you an answer right now, but what I can tell you is this given that it's a 400 year old phenomenon, this unfair core periphery relationships <coughs> where there's extraction. Where, where you keep certain countries as producers of raw materials and in a way force them to under development by selling <coughs> manufactured products. And, and, and that core peripheral relationships have been maintained for so long that we need to break it. But what I can tell you for sure, I can, I'm not going to tell you right now my, my, my recipe for revolution, because I don't believe in that. But what I can tell you right now is that only a materialist philosophy in which we actually think about the material plunder of the third world countries, not just ideas, yes they were Christianized and yes signifiers were propagated among them and so on, but Mexicans are clever, Mexicans are supposed to be worshipping the Virgen de Guadalupe, the Guadalupe Virgin, which is a signifier, but everybody knows they're still worshipping Xochipilli. The Virgin appeared in the exact same place that Xochipilli appeared, all they did is change the name of the old god to satisfy the idiot priests. <laughs> so the, the wars were not the colonizing factor. The colonizing factor was material. It was the plunder of these people. If you want to get to any fair relation, every fair state of affairs that is fair for everybody, we need, we need to start being, being materialistic. That's for sure. Okay, materialistic thinking. Let's go home. Thank you. <laughs>